Over halfway through, how's it going? Well, it's get drying out out there now, so it's getting better. A bit more grip. We still had to spin on the previous stage to this one. So uh, I think we're still just in the lead, but it's uh, hanging on with our fingernails. Halfway point in the day then, and the stage changes direction now. The drivers come on from the Grand Prix circuit into the Indy circuit in the correct direction before heading down through the paddock and finishing on the slippery rally stage. And then straight down. On board with Char 15. This is the Cossack Escort, which we saw hit the tyres earlier in the day. And you can see the damage has been repaired just there. Back on board. Tied hairpin left. Shakir enters right, he's far enough behind. Nick Jarvis and Dennis Sutton in car number 12. That's a uh, N10 specification Subaru. The 10, of course, describing is it what year the car came out fully rebuilt recently refettled ready for a new season of competition trevor martin in an older specification subaru equally potent for these single venue events trevor used to do the 106 and the 206 cup and he's followed by royston carey who in fact won special stages three and four in the clio dean thomas in car eight he was second on stage three and third on stage four. Closed the lead down now to just six seconds behind Paul King. And this is the first time we've seen shots of a car overtaking on a single venue rally. It does happen. Car 31 there being passed by number 28. 28 is Martin Page and Hugh Holdway. They pick and choose events, often top 10 finishers around the hairpin and following them through. In fact, this uh, Escort, the Mark IV, there was the first one to be converted to rear-wheel drive. Car 26, this is Tony Michael and Paul Barrett, who are both members of the organising club. And you can see the split there, where they split off to the right to continue around the circuit, down through Paddock Hill Bend, in fact. A couple of laps around the circuit before splitting off and heading towards the finish. Civic sounding nice on the way up towards Druids. And this is car 27, big spin there for Chris Gravestock. His Peugeot 106 Cup car, very, very lucky not to get stuck in the gravel trap. Another couple of feet in, and that might well have been game over. The Ferrari from earlier on, through the chicane and heading up towards the hairpin. And more problems at the hairpin. Uphill, it's even more difficult. You don't have the momentum to be able to spin the back of the car around. The Ferrari gets stuck again, holding up car 32 of Colin Paul and Mark Nurse. Very polite there, not using the horn. I think many a driver would have been on the horn immediately. They were stuck. More cars through the back of the pit lane. Vince Bristow locking a wheel into the chicane. Up and around the hairpin, Roland Brown in their historic Mark 1 spec escort. You can see the difference there as well between a rear-wheel drive and a front-wheel drive through the hairpin. This is a little jump, which we mentioned earlier, down into the paddock through a very narrow gate just down the shop and a four-wheel drive around the hairpin there with no handbrake release which releases the rear diff it can be very very hard to get a four-wheel drive around one of those tight corners car 44 this is alan and liam carfrey who say that any finish is a notable result and another shot of vince bristow here hastings base rally driver he's competed as far afield as new zealand all sorts of these events as well. Nissan Micro over the jump. And another wonderful shot of that Renault 5. 1981, the car was first rallied. Full historic group four spec, no modifications at all. The longest history of any Renault 5 competing in rallying, apparently. Sounding fantastic as well as it blasts away from the hairpin. Even an old Mini there as well, the full mix of cars at the single venue events. Car 57 clouting the tyres as you came there, that makes it slightly more open for the drivers who are following. And with this layout of the stage as well, the cars get to attack Paddock Hill Bend in the same way the touring cars do a big, big drop over the crest there. This is Matt Endine in the red Nissan Micra taking advantage of the chicane being open, as does the car behind. Matt is the husband of Suze, who you saw at the start of the show. And this is actually Suze's rally car, so Matt was under strict orders not to damage it. Car 64, this is Ross Wilson and Russell Thompson. Ross is a panel beater by trade, which I can assure you is a very useful trade to have if you're a rally driver. Doesn't look like he'll be doing any work this week. On board with Paul King and Alicia Miles down on the rally stage, just starting to dry out now. Better. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Properly this time. <laughs> That's better. Get it up there. Yellow board signifying the flying finish is coming up. And those boards you can't see the other side of are red. That's where the timing beam is. Alan Thompson and Neil Harrison. This was the Ford Fiesta that we saw this morning. It was so tricky in slippery conditions. And left up the hill. And still very, very hard to drive. Just seems to be on a knife edge in the dam. All the drivers keen to get over the finish as quick as they can. Well done. Just holds on to it. Subaru down over the jump. Modern rally cars well equipped to deal with that. Car number 10 on the knife edge, that's Paul Diamond over the finish line. And this is Royston Carey. The front wheel drive Clio has done some good stage times today, winning two of the stages in uh, damp conditions. You might have expected the four wheel drives to come to the fore. But Royston knows what he's up to in the Clio, over the flying finish for him as well. Car 15, down over the jump. Just touching the sump guard. And then down right at the end of the rally stage again. The engine noise echoing around as Ian Hucklebridge and Gary Johnson wrestle the mark to escort over the finish. Little lift off the throttle over the jump there for the Astra. And another sideways finish coming up. Well, there we are then, after special stage six, Dean Thomas just takes the lead from Paul King by three seconds with Jeremy Straker lying in third. It's all to play for with just a couple of stages to go. Now to make things a little bit more tricky, darkness is approaching and the rain is starting to fall as well. Hopefully we'll get through it before it gets too dark. I don't have any additional lights, but we'll be fine, I'm sure. So if it stays dry, we may have a chance. We're on slick tyres, so if it continues to get wet, we're doomed, but we'll see what happens. On your way into the last stage, what's the plan? To watch the temperature gauge that just went through the roof about five minutes ago on the last stage. So I don't know if we're finished, to be honest. It's, uh, we're going to try. Two, Worry one, then for Dean go. Thomas as he goes into the final two stages of the day. Will the engine five, hold on? Right and will Jeremy Straker, Paul King, will Royston Kerry be able to nick the win? See, that's what I remember about it last time. Go, 45 left over crest. On board with Straker. It's raining now. Conditions heading back to somewhere where they were this morning. If you remember the last run through the rally stage, the rally school stage section it was dry. Now just starting to get wet, and you can see Straker really tiptoeing round. Nice right going up. The wheel spin as well, despite short shifting on the gearbox. 45 left, 45 right, 45 left, slippery. Very, very greasy at the bottom here, the mud dragged all over the stage. Paul King on slicks, and you can see immediately from the pace of the car from these shots that that was probably not the right decision. Up and over the jump, Straker heads up towards the Indy circuit. Paul King spins down into the mud at the bottom of the stage. And no grip at all, you heard it there from the man himself. Over a short section of gravel before heading up to the circuit, Tony Clements, the old clerk of the course in the four-wheel drive Mitsubishi, struggling for grip as well. Not got his lamp pod, his auxiliary lighting on just yet, but the light fading. Back with Alan Thompson in that tricky Fiesta. Just feathering the brakes, dropping off the knife edge. Down towards the hairpin. Really right at the end of the day, these conditions and the failing light as well. It's anybody's event. Nothing in it between the top four drivers. Paul King fully on it now, trying to make up for that lost time. Comes out past the famous Panic Hill Bend grandstand and accelerates away. Dean Thomas, the event leader, was actually taken to removing the engine cover in an attempt to keep the temperatures of the engine down for long enough. Nervous times when you're leading an event. Always think that you're hearing noises that maybe you're not, but Thomas has seen that temperature gauge go through the roof. Taking the engine cover off and he needs to hang on for two more stages. No light to the straker, but the wipers are on. Much better idea from this shot as well as just how dark it is getting. Up and over the crest. 
Dean Thomas makes his way out for a couple of laps around the Indy circuit. You can hear the wheel spin there just as the car drops over the crest and goes light on the suspension. Royston Carey in the top front wheel drive car and on a mission all day long. Here's the Evo 9 again, flames from the exhaust as the anti-lag works but just running wide Tony Clements and then seems that the car might have stalled on the exit of the hairpin here. It's just wide enough that the Mark II will be able to sneak up the inside. It can be difficult to start a competition engine. So you've stalled it when it's hot. Very, very slippery indeed. Closing stages of the rally were exceptionally tricky for everyone. Finally then our result at the end of the day. Dean Thomas did manage to hold on for the win from Jeremy Straker and Royston Kerry. Paul King unfortunately with that spin dropping out of the top three. Winner of Class A was Tony Capon. Bit of a change of position there. How, what's your take on that? Well, it was a bit of a disaster. We, um, we've we decided to uh, stay on slick tyres and with the weather starting to rain, we, we just couldn't get enough grip and we, we've lost about 20 seconds. So uh, uh, the results gone with that as well. So um, that's where we are now. We went into the last stage third. Um, we thought there was a slim chance of catching Paul. Um, I understand he had a, a, a bit of a spin or a half spin on the last stage. We also heard that Dean Thomas had done a bit of grass track racing out there. So we weren't sure how much time he'd lost, but. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's done a great drive today. Dean deserves the win. Congratulations on the win. How was it out there? Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic day. Organised brilliant. The, the circuit, the track, everything is more than you could have ever wished for. It was brilliant. The organisation, tricky conditions, so it made it an even playing field. So we're ecstatic. Absolutely brilliant day. Well, that's it from Brands Hatch. If you'd like to keep up with the events, it's chelmsfordmc.co.uk. There's a summer rally as well. So perhaps we'll see you at the circuit for that. We'll see you next time.